It's time to run through the newest 60-day notice to terminate tenancy in the state of California. Technically, it's a 30, 60, and 90-day notice, and we'll explain why. In this quick guide for renters and landlords, we're also going to cover some of the biggest mistakes that landlords make, including one thing that, if it's missing, completely invalidates the notice. And we'll also give you an idea of where you can find this form as a landlord and where you shouldn't find this form as a landlord. Hey there, Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates. We've been helping renters and landlords understand their rights before things go wrong. And remember, we can't give tax or legal advice, but for the most honest and up-to-date real estate advice, subscribe to this channel. But before you attempt to give this notice, there's a couple of important things that landlords and renters need to understand. Number one, the tenancy must be month to month. It can't be a fixed term tenancy. You can't be in the middle of a lease and attempt to terminate a tenancy. Number two, another important thing to understand, and we'll talk about this some more, is that there could be local just cause or rent stabilization ordinances in place that will either prevent a landlord from terminating a tenancy in certain cases, or there will be different requirements. So the landlord may have to give additional time. They may have to pull permits first if they do certain things. They may owe higher levels of relocation assistance. So it is important to understand local regulations before moving forward with a notice to terminate tenancy. And that's why you need to turn to an attorney as well. Let's dive into the June 2023 version of the 60-day notice. It's also a 30 and 90-day notice as well. And we've done previous videos. Nothing has really changed in the law for terminating a tenancy. I guess I shouldn't say that there have been quite a few changes in certain local areas, but at the statewide level, no real recent changes. But the form is different. First thing you'll notice, it has a cover page and... This cover page is meant to help agents be able to use this form. And we're not going to read this whole thing. I'm going to explain how to use this form. So really what it's talking about is the Tenant Protection Act, AB 1482. That is the statewide law that dictates termination of tenancy. It also gives the big warning, like I've given you, that there can be local rent and eviction control. And that's what you need to know. And that's where the changes are. Most frequently, it's locally. And then it talks about other tenancy termination forms, three-day notices. We're not going to go into that. We're talking about terminating a tenancy through a no-fault reason. The tenant hasn't done anything wrong, so this is what you're going to use. So that cover letter, you don't use that. You throw that away. In these two pages, this is what you're going to use. Now, the top is easy. Who it goes to, it's going to go to the tenant. Name as many tenants as you have, but it also says in any other occupants in possession. So if you miss a name, it's okay. Then you're going to check a box and under one. It's either the property is covered by the Tenant Protection Act or is not covered. It's exempt from the Tenant Protection Act. So that's the first box to check, and we've released other content so you can figure figure out whether the property is exempt or subject to the Tenant Protection Act or AB 1482. That changes things dramatically. That's what the rest of the forum is going to cover, plus some other important stuff you're not going to miss. Now, this is going to apply whether you're using this form or not. Whether a property is subject to the Tenant Protection Act or not will dictate this process, and it'll be the same whether you're using this exact form. So once you've determined whether the property is subject to the Tenant Protection Act, you check number two. Or number three, that's it. Don't check both. You can't check both. So number two is properties that are subject to the Tenant Protection Act. Before we go into A, let's look at B. It says your tenancy, if any, in the premises is terminated 30 days from the service of this notice or blank. It could be later. It could be 45 days, whatever, if a landlord wants to give more time. This only applies if a tenant has been there for less than 12 months. So this would be a property that is subject to AB 1482. For example, a unit in a 100 unit building and it's older than 15 years, but the tenant hasn't been there for at least a year. That means it could be terminated with a 30 day notice. You're gonna check this box and you're not gonna to have to give a just cause reason. That's where A comes in. So if the tenant has been there for longer than a year, it must fall within one of these reasons. And if the tenant's been there for longer than a year, it's a 60-day notice. Or again, it can be longer than 60 days. Put a date in there. So if it's a property subject to the Tenant Protection Act 
and you have to give the 60 day notice, there's going to be a few specific reasons you can give. One would be family move-ins. You're gonna check this box and it's gonna be the owner, a spouse, a domestic partner, parents, grandparents, children, or grandchildren intend to occupy the premises. I'm doing this because there's a straight line. It's not nieces and nephews, uncles and aunts. It's that straight line. Gonna move into the property and the lease has to say or has to be a document like they say here, the RCJC that specifically allows a tenancy to be terminated for this reason. Uh, number two, owner intends to withdraw the premises from the rental market. In some areas, this triggers the Ellis Act, so bear that in mind. Number three, owner intends to demolish or substantially remodel the premises. If it's to demolish, that could also trigger the Ellis Act in some areas. A substantial remodel in some areas, you're gonna have to pull permits first, etc. So you need to know the rules in your local area. Number four, a government order uh, must be complied with so the tenant has to move out. Next important part, if you're falling under A, are the relocation fees. So at minimum, you're gonna owe one month's rent to the tenant as a landlord, and it could be paid directly within 15 days of the notice of termination of tenancy, or you can waive the last month's rent. In some areas, this amount would be higher, could be up to three months, it could be even higher. LA City has specific requirements for relocation assistance. You need to know as a landlord or a renter what your local relocation assistance requirements are. Moving on to three, these are properties or tenancies not subject to the Tenant Protection Act. So under this, the landlord doesn't have to give a reason for the tenancy termination, nor do they owe relocation assistance. So if this box is lawfully checked and the property is exempt, for example, a house or a condo under certain circumstances, the landlord can just give the notice. Now you'll see there's an A, B, and C. So this is 60 day notice for a tenant who's lived there for a year or more. It's a 30 day notice for a tenant who's been there less than a year. And it's a 90 day notice if the tenant is subject to housing assistance, for example, section eight. So this form, while I'll call a 60 day notice, is actually a 30, 60, or 90 day notice. And again, don't forget that there may be longer requirements in your local area. And don't forget we're real estate agents based in Southern California. Before you buy or sell a tenant occupied property, make sure you reach out to us. Moving right along to page two. Now this is an extension of section three. There are certain circumstances where a tenancy that's over a year can be terminated with a 30 day notice if everything is met in D and it's very rare this would happen and i don't recommend doing this if it's an exempt property and you're trying to get the tenant out to sell d does not apply d only applies if the property's in escrow you've already had the tenant there and it meets these other requirements so you are probably just going to want to stick with a b or c number four says if a tenant fails to give up possession by the specified date legal action may move forward and there could be damages that have to be paid number five is 1946.1. If this is not on a notice, then the notice to terminate tenancy is not valid. Again, section 1946.1. This is literally one of the, the biggest mistakes that landlords make. When you Google it up, like my son Liam says, and you find forms or you write your own termination form, if it's missing this and the tenant doesn't move out after 60 days, you can't evict them. You're going to lose in court. And so note that tenants, that this could be your get out of eviction free card if this language is not on your notice. There is no exception, no way around it. This must be on there. And the final step and also an important step and another one, the second biggest thing that many folks mess up in the process is delivery of the notice. It can't just be emailed. You can't text it or a picture of it. It must be delivered like this. And this happens to be a receipt to show how it was delivered. And it's also a helpful way to understand exactly the process. So what needs to happen is one of these. A would be personal service. So the notice, you knock on the door and it's actually handed to the tenant. B would be it's given to somebody else of a suitable age that is in the property as well. So you can't hand it to a kid and say, hey, here is the notice. 
So B would be what's known as substituted service. The next way, if a landlord can't find the tenant, knocks on the door, they don't answer, then it can be posted in mail. By posting, it gets hung to the door, and then you take a picture of it, say of a record landlords, and then a copy of it is mailed. It doesn't need to be sent certified or registered mail in this case, but you may want to, to have show that you have proof that you actually mailed it as well. And then the last one, the alternative would be serving by certified or registered mail. This does add additional time that's required for the notice. It explains here. And landlords, either you can do this, uh, you can have an agent do it, or you can hire a process server to do it. One of the biggest questions we get is where can we find this form? And the short answer is you can reach out to a real estate agent who you know and trust. This is the California Association of Realtors form. They should be able to get you a copy. You can also join an apartment or landlord association. This is another great route to go. You'll be kept up to date on latest legislation besides watching our channel and you'll be able to get copies of forms like we saw in this video. Where you shouldn't turn to get this form is a simple Google search or even a complex Google search. You will end up finding a form that is most likely invalid and make sure you have it reviewed by an attorney before you deliver it, no matter where you get the form from. It may have been just a couple pages, but we covered a lot of ground. Let us know your questions below and make sure you subscribe to our free weekly email newsletter so you get important updates like these coming right to your email inbox on Sunday. Oh, and if you like this video, you're gonna love this next one. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates, Berkshire Hathaway Homes, services and we want to hear from you.